Hello, my name is Stuart Glynn and I'll be talking to you today about an X-band gallium nitride power amplifier MMIC which has been designed using UMS's GH25 process and using Keysight's ADS. I'd first like to outline the target specification for this power amplifier MMIC. So it has to work over a frequency range of 9 to 11 gigahertz, have better than 12 dB small signal gain, be capable of better than 6 watts saturated output power and do better than 40% power added efficiency. And these uh, devices on this process work off a drain voltage of 25 volts. So the key design steps uh, in, in the development of this MMIC was to first carry out a number of device level simulations. And the outputs of these simulations were um, to, to help identify the unit device size, uh, the bias point, uh, the fundamental and harmonic impedance targets, both at the load and source, and the uh, number of stages and the number of devices in the output stage. Now all that information gets fed into the schematic design, which is the next step. And during this, this part of the process, we've identified the matching network topologies and the bias network topologies, and come up with a um, an amplifier design that's stable at all frequencies and showing performance close to that uh, predicted at the device level simulations. Um, then once the schematic is fixed we move up to the, to the layout stage and the first step is to produce a placement layout or preliminary layout which we, th we, can, which we can then start performing some EM simulations on. And um, typically, uh, because we uh, are going for quite a compact design, there will be some um, layout optimization. So there's, uh, some ir uh, there's an iterative process going on here. And then when, when we've completed the EM simulations and the layout optimization, we might have to fix some final small DRC errors. Um, and, but at this point, we're, we're largely ready for tape out. Okay, so I'll just talk about these de device level simulations first. So what I'm showing here is a table of uh, performance, key performance parameters. So I've got uh, power at 4 dB compression, power of efficiency at 4 dB compression, and the gain at 4 dB compression. And what this table is for is for a unit cell consisting of uh, eight fingers with each finger of 150 micron width. So it's a 1.2 millimeter device. <coughs> and all the key thing I'm investigating at this point is the effect of altering the quiescent bias point. So going from 100 milliamp per millimeter current density um, down to 75 and then 50 milliamp per millimeter. And what we can see, uh, the, the general picture is that the, the power at 4 dB compression is improving slightly as we reduce this um, quiescent bias. The power added efficiency is also improving slightly as well. But the, uh, the gain is, is, is dropping as, as you might expect. So we, we would look to, um, so this suggests that we should choose a bias point um, to give us the, the, the best chance of meeting these large signal parameters. But at the same time, we, we need to ensure we still have uh, adequate gain. So we, we, we went for, a, in the end, we went for a bias point slightly lower than this one uh, at 37.5 milliamp per millimeter. So <clears throat> I'd like to uh, go into some detail now of these device level simulations and in particular load pull. So I'll just move over to ADS, which I have here. And I'll, I'll pull up. Um, a load pull test bench. Now this was put together by um, Keysight, this particular test bench, and they've put together a number of very useful um, test benches where you can tune um, not just load, but you can tune source, and you can tune harmonics, and, uh, and maybe a, a certain comp point of compression. Uh, but this one here, um, I'm currently, uh, or I've currently set up to um, do some fundamental load pull at uh, a number of 
input power levels. So we're sweeping the input power, and each input power we are we are performing some load pull at the fundamental. Um, the uh, the second harmonic um, at the load and the, and and source and the third harmonic at the load and source are fixed. And I've actually used a, another test bench, which I'll, I'll show you shortly, um, to to come up with these uh, target um, load impedances at the second and, and third harmonic. So I'll talk about that shortly, but for now I'll I'll um, I'll, I'll show you this uh, key. Um, fundamental load pull test bench. Now over here uh, we have um, our unit cell, eight fingers, each of 150 micron width, and it's been simulated at a base place temperature of 25 degrees C, and it's uh, biased from a, a 25 volt drain voltage. So if I simulate this uh, test bench, Now it's collecting quite a lot of data, so it, it, it does take a, li a little bit of time. But I, I'll show you the kind of data, kind of useful data it, it, it can give you. Okay, so that uh, load pool simulation has finished now. So over here, you, you are able to um, select the desired available power going into the device. Um, over here, it's just telling you what the um, the source um, impedance condition was, both fundamental and harmonics. And over here, it's telling you what the the load impedance condition was at the harmonics. Um, so, um, if we're interested in uh, in this case uh, four dB compression, we can uh, we can move this marker here. Um, and move this marker here to eventually find um, a point um, that's going to offer us a good compromise uh, between power and power added efficiency at 4 dB compression. So you can currently see that uh, at this power level and at this um, impedance here, um, which on a Smith chart is, is uh, highlighted um, with this black dot here, um, you, you can see that at, at round about the 4 dB compression level, which, which is the compression levels indicated by this plot here, um, we're, we're achieving about 58% power added efficiency and about 36.5 um, dBm output power. So this, this, uh, this impedance, uh, this load impedance, which is 11.25 plus J21.67, is a good um, compromise between uh, power and power added efficiency. So it, it, it's a good fundamental um, target to go for at the load. I'll now like to uh, talk about the um, test bench for looking at the uh, harmonic impedances at the load. So I, I have that one here. Just one moment, I'll find it. Here we go. So on this test bench, it looks similar to the, the last one I, I, I showed you. Uh, we have the same unit cell, uh, biased in a similar way. Uh, I'm now presenting the fundamental load that I, I just described. And in this case, we're going to sweep the second harmonic at the load. The source conditions are very similar to what they were in the previous test bench. So it's good to check what happens at the harmonic frequencies, as you'll see in one moment. Okay, so so this is this is an interesting plot here. We have power added efficiency on the left and delivered power on the right, and what we're doing in this test bench is actually um, just sweeping the phase of the of the impedance um, at, at the harmonic. Um, and we're actually going round the edge of the Smith chart, so the it, it, it's close to it's close to a purely reactive impedance. And you can see that there's 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 a region um, round about here 
that you'd probably want to avoid because it, it, it's, it's predicting quite a, a drop if you're not careful in, in power added efficiency and power. So it's probably safer to um, aim for a phase of about uh, 50 degrees which is, which is occurring, which, which is about here on, on a Smith chart. So when we are choosing the, the topology of our output match, then we would want to um, ensure that it is um, providing a favourable harmonic impedance and, it, and it's not going to be uh, in this region here. Um, so likewise, uh, we can do the same uh, at the, uh, the third harmonic. So what I've just shown you for the second harmonic, so we can do the same for the third harmonic. I'll just run that, see what happens. Okay, so we have this, this plot over here. And what you can see, there's, there's a similar um, range of phases that we'd like to avoid round here, similar to before. It, it's round about the 170 degree mark. So it's probably uh, but, but other than that, probably most places uh, along the Smith chart are, are, are showing quite a flat um, um, characteristic of um, either power versus phase or power efficiency versus phase. So as long as we're away from this, uh, this region here, we, we should be fine. So for example, we, we might want to target um, Maybe ideally we might like to be there because the performance looks ever so slightly better than other parts. But we, you know, over here, for example, would would equally be fine. Um, so anyway, it was it was very useful to carry out this analysis and check the sensitivity of performance to the phase of, of the harmonics. Okay, if I just go back to my uh, PowerPoint. So I've just been over these two types of uh, load pull test benches, and this is the, as shown, I got this kind of uh, this kind of a plot, and this this was another key plot for the the fundamental load pull, where you can you can see the the trade of uh, power um, delivered power with power added efficiency along here, and um, and the way we did this uh, was to actually um, tune uh, both the, the real and imaginary part of an impedance. So each each colour, each coloured trace corresponds to a, um, a different imaginary part, and then each point along that trace corresponds to a different real part. So that's how this test bench was set up. And just to reiterate, the selected fundamental load target was um, 11.25 ohms plus J 21.67 ohms. And this, this plot is what I've previously shown, that we, we want to be careful to choose the phase of the second harmonic correctly to avoid um, um, falling into this, this notch area where we'll start to lose some performance. And, and likewise, there's, there's at a, at similar phases that the third, the third harmonic um, needs to be carefully considered to avoid, uh, avoid any unnecessary degradation in performance by falling here. <clears throat> so to summarise the device level simulations, um, we've gone for a, a unit device size of 8 by 150 micron, a bias point of 37.5 milliamp per millimetre, the fundamental load target 11.25 plus J 21.67 ohms, and we think the best phase for the second harmonic um, load is 50 degrees. Um, for the third harmonic, the best if possible minus 135 degrees but as long as we avoid this the area around 170 degrees we should be fine. Um, the fundamental source target 2.2 ohms plus J 5.5 ohms and um, I also carried out some um, analysis on the, the second harmonic source target and, and generally we, we should be okay as long as we avoid the region around uh, 180 degrees for the case of the third harmonic, as long as we avoid the region round minus 160 degrees. 
So we think uh, the uh, target spec can be realized with uh, one stage uh, consisting of um, two of these uh, unit cells combined and the uh, total quiescent current we are basing this on 37.5 milliamp per millimeter density would mean um, for the full amplifier would mean a total quiescent current of 90 milliamps and this sh <coughs> the expected performance at this level would be well yes we should be able to achieve our th um, uh, saturated output power of better than 38 dBm and we should be able to achieve our power efficiency of better than 40 percent. Okay, I'd now like to move on <laughs> to the schematic design. <coughs> so I'll, I'll go to this in more detail later but i will just like to put this up in, in, as an initial look-see. Uh, but one of the key things I'd like to show is that um, the output match topology has been chosen such that we uh, get close to this uh, fundamental target. So in actual fact I'm reading 12 plus J21.8 so that's quite close to the, this fundamental target previously identified. And the, the second harmonic is, is occurring close to the 50 degrees um, which we identified as, as, as optimum and in fact that's uh, 47.83 which is very close to this 50 degrees. And uh, the third harmonic is, is, is in a good place that's, that's well away from the um, from the 170 degree um, region which we identified as um, a place to avoid <coughs> and then on the source <coughs> we can see um, that we are close to the 2.2 uh, plus J 5.5 here in fact it's 4 plus J 4.9 it's probably slightly different because I was also bearing in mind the, the, the gain and, and the input return loss as, as well. Um, and the, the harmonics are also occurring away from the um, avoid areas that I identified during my device level simulations. <coughs> okay, I'd just like to um, look at this um, schematic design in more detail by moving over to ADS. I'll just pull up the relevant schematic uh, and test bench. So here we go. Okay, so so here it is. Here's here's the design. Um, I, I showed you a quick PowerPoint of earlier. So so now I'm able to kind of zoom in and, and talk in, in in more detail. So. Um, if this is the, the output here, the 50 ohm output, the first matching element is, is a shunt C and that's um, for symmetry I've implemented the shunt C uh, like this and um, you'll be able to see in the layout I've, I've, I've also um, used the, uh, the, the ground of the ground signal ground pads um, <laughs> Um, for, for these shunt capacitors and that's helped uh, achieve a compact design. So, so it's essentially shunt C series L um, it's the uh, output match. The drain feed is, is applied here and this is actually this is, this is um, doing some matching as well it, it, it's not um, necessarily a choke it's actually um, helping um, with, with, with the output match and on all this together um, help me achieve those um, harmonic impedance targets that, that I mentioned. Um, on the other side of this drain bias line I have um, a capacitor that's been sized to be an RF short in band and then I have some um, lower frequency decoupling on the other side of that and so this region is, is on chip and then I'm modeling some off chip um, decoupling that, that you might um, wish to implement. Um, so I think I have. Uh, so I've got 10 nanofarads on the other side of a, of a 1.5 nanohenry inductor. So this might um, represent the closest um, you, could, you could get um, a shunt capacitor, an external shunt capacitor to the device. Okay, and then uh, other features um, round here. 
an output um, odd mode suppression resistor and likewise a, a similar odd mode suppression resistor has been implemented on the input. This inductor here is um, modelling the effects of via shearing. So in order to achieve a compact design we, we decided we'll um, do some via shearing which you'll see more clearly in the layout later and to model that um, we've introduced this uh, inductance here 0.87 picohenries to be exact. So the topology for the input match uh, essentially series L shunt C, series L shunt C and over here we have some um, we have a network here to help um, help drop the low frequency gain a, a, as much as possible. Um, also the bias networks also help to, um, to reduce the low frequency gain as well. And we have a, a DC blocking capacitor at the input here. Um, this capacitor here tends to be quite large so I, I prefer to split it into two. Um, Okay, and over here just the, the simulation controllers. Um, small signal and uh, large signal, harmonic balance, gain compression, that sort of thing. So if I simulate this, we'll see what sort of performance I got at the schematic stage. Simulation's finished. I'll just zoom in to the small signal performance. So uh, we've got um, again at the bottom of the band of 14.7, but at the top it's dropped to 11.3. So um, this is uh, generally the right sort of level, but as, as we progress the design, we, we might look to uh, see if we can improve this a bit. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens during the, the next phase, which is the uh, EM simulation phase. Um, S22 is doing well better than 10 dBs across the band. Um, the input return loss better than 9 dBs across the band. And you, you can clearly see that uh, the K factor is do, doing well there. So it's, it's stable over, um, I think, from 100 megahertz up to, up to 30 gigahertz. Um, and then as for the large signal uh, simulations, so here we have the output power at 4 dB compression. So we are certainly meeting our, our better than 6 watt specification. So at the bottom of the band it's uh, slightly below 38 dBm at 37.99. And uh, and, and then otherwise better than 38.5 dBm across the band. And power added efficiency, we have a peak power added efficiency of about 48% occurring mid band and about 40, uh, about 43, but, well, better than four, certainly better than 42% at, at, the, at the band edges. Okay, so I'll just return now to my PowerPoint and we now move on to the layout stage so at, at, at this point we've carried out a preliminary uh, layout we've done some uh, EM simulations and it's been um, an iterative process and the EM simulations are key in this design because we want to get it as compact as possible um, which means introducing um, a lot of bends and, and meanders, uh, as, as you can see here. We, we, we've done a lot of uh, meandering, and, and so you really need some, some good EM simulations to ensure um, you can accurately predict the performance. The, uh, the capacitors, um, the shunt capacitors I mentioned earlier, you can see they are using the ground of the ground signal ground pad here and that, that was a, a means of achieving a compact design. Um, 
I, I was also interested in keeping the design as, as symmetrical as, as possible. Um, so, so that's why I uh, implemented the capacitors like this, top and bottom. Um, and so this, this is the, the final design, but it was um, arrived at through uh, a kind of an iterative process of EM simulations. And, the, and if we just move on to the next slide, th this just shows the stack that we use for those EM simulations. We put this together ourselves. And our, our, our goal um, when we do these in EM simulations is, is to be able to simulate quite a large chunk of, of metal to capture all the um, asymmetries and coupling that are introduced as, as, as a um, consequence of, of trying to achieve a compact design. So this, this metal work here is for the output match and, and, and the drain bias as well. So here is where the um, device drains. Um, each, each device is the 8x150 I mentioned. Um, so that's where the device drains would um, uh, come in. The RF output is over here. Drain bias is applied here um, and or here. Th this has been designed for, for single side bias, so it, it, ca it can be applied either top, top or bottom. And then likewise for, for the uh, input match, the, the RF input goes here. Uh, these ports go to the, uh, the gate manifold of, of, the, um, of the devices. And the gate bias is applied here or here. Again, either, either top or bottom, it supports single side bias. So um, the schematic um, looks a lot simpler now because a lot of those components showed earlier are now absorbed into either this, this block here, which is at the input, or, or this block here, which, which is at the output. So the, the final EM simulated performance is, is shown on the next uh, couple of slides. So you can see um, that uh, one, of, one of the goals was to try to um, increase the, uh, the gain at the top of the band. I think that was... Uh, I've increased that by um, around about 0.8 dBs, I, I, I think, so that, that's, that's a more favourable um, gain response there. Uh, the output match is still good, better than 10 dBs um, across the band. Input match is um, yeah, uh, still better than 9 dBs across the band. And uh, we've still got a good uh, K factor there. So it's, it's, it's nice and stable from quite low frequency, say 100 megahertz up to, up to 30 gigahertz. <coughs> and then the um, large signal performance, uh, we're, we're still achieving very similar to, to what we had at the schematic stage, in fact, in fact slightly better. Um, so the, the power is um, 38 dBm at the bottom of the band, but in, in, in fact for the rest of the band it's, it's predicting slightly better than 39 dBm. So that's comfortably meeting our saturated power specification. And then at the power added efficiency, um, we're doing um, basically better than, better than 44 across the band here. And peak is uh, about 47.5%. Um, okay, so um, the uh, layout I, I, I sh the completed layout I showed earlier um, uh, was fabricated um, at UMS and this is a photograph of, of the fabricated GAN power amplifier MMIC and it's quite a compact design coming out at um, two millimeters in, in the X 1.5 millimeters in the Y and that means that you should be able to um, achieve around 2,300 die per 4 inch diameter wafer. So these uh, devices were evaluated uh, on wafer at UMS and um, here's some small signal um, uh, data here at the quiescent bias point of, of 90 milliamps which corresponds to 37.5 milliamp per millimeter uh, I mentioned earlier and you can see we're 
at uh, the bottom of the band gains about 14, at the top of the band's gain is slightly better than 12 dB. So that's, uh, that's a good level of gain. And as well as small signal, there was a lot of um, uh, large signal um, measurements carried out. Again, on about 40 devices. Um, so this plot is um, output power. Now, um, this is actually output power at um, one, two, three, four different input drive levels. So, so the lowest uh, input drive level is 5 dBm, which is corresponding to the red traces here. And the next um, level up was 19 dBm, corresponding to these blue traces here. And uh, the preferred drive level actually was uh, 29 dBm, which, is, um, which uh, corresponds to the green traces. Um, we, we actually then drove it slightly harder at uh, 32 dBm, which, which is the orange. But the preferred drive level was, was this corresponds to this green, and it's 29 dBm. And you can s clearly see that uh, typically we are um, achieving at the bottom of the band uh, probably uh, probably our six watts with um, the, the bottom of the band and probably more like um, 38 and a half um, which, which is about seven watts um, mid band and, and and certainly doing we're doing quite well for power at the top of band as well so there that's that's very good power level at the 29 dBm input drive level <coughs> and then this next slide this time is power added efficiency and if we uh, focus on the, the green which is our preferred input drive level you can see that typically we're better than 42 percent um, at the band edges here with a peak um, power added efficiency of um, a, uh, getting on for 49 percent which is which is very good comparing very well with the, the simulations I carried out earlier. And in fact, if, if we do um, some comparison with uh, modeled versus measured, uh, we've got um, a power transfer characteristic at 9.7 gigahertz. And uh, the measured is in blue and the modeled is in red. And you can see there's, there's very good agreement between the two. Um, so, I'd just like to um, uh, summarise the, the performance of, of, these me um, of these devices that have been measured. Uh, so typically, um, it looks like they are actually covering slightly better than the, the, the 9 to 11 target and actually working fairly well up to 11.5 gigahertz. The small signal gain typically is around about 13 dBs. Input return losses are adequate, output return losses are adequate. And the saturated power is, is doing well at um, mid-band. We're coming out with 38.5 dBm for the corresponding 29 dBm input drive. And the power of efficiency is actually better than 42% um, um, for this uh, 29 dBm input drive. And also the, the, the gain flatness, um, certainly the large signal is, is, is very good coming out at plus or minus 0.5 dBm, plus or minus dB, sorry, plus or minus 0.5 dB. That concludes my presentation. For more information, please visit our website, plextechrfi.com. Thank you.